because he was looking for something better, he came to Jesus running. And when Jesus said, sell everything that you have, come and follow me. The first time he was running, when he heard this, he turned his back and he was walking. You don't have so probably you don't have so much money just like this young man. But your things got hold of you more than Jesus Christ tonight. Amen. Maybe it's your career. You focus more than anything about your career. And your mind is toward the career to become somebody. Maybe it's your vice. Some people doesn't care if there's no food on the table. As long as this vice can be pampered and be enjoyed. I have seen an old man and through the years of my ministry in countries of the world ministering to some addict people possessing control by different vices. A man is skin and bones. And he said to me, Pastor, I can get rid of my alcohol even if it destroys my body. And he wants to follow. He listened to the preaching. I could not get rid of my alcohol and when I was young and during the time he was about 68 years old. He could not stop. I would just die drinking. You know what? This is something that is equivalent to God to some people, but God can help. And the first thing that you can do is, Lord, forgive me, and Jesus will forgive. And the second thing that He will do, once you say, God, forgive me, come into my heart, He will break the chain of your vice, and you'll become a brand new person. Now, the television set today is filled with sexual contents. The result of that, even the little ones, 12 to 13 become sexually active. Now the older ones, I tell you, even the older one, you might be 67 or 80, the same appetite that was innate in us. And you know, it's inside of our system and our mind. Even the older people are hooked up in, porno in pornography, in the cable TV, in, in the internet computer. Now this vices, like a little God that you cherish, you pamper, you, you nurture, you put some water in a secret chamber of your heart. This kind of vices mentioned is like a cobra. It is sin inside of the human heart. The sin in the recesses of the human heart. One day, the venomous cobra or that vice will strike you to death. The time element is unimportant to Satan. Once you hook up into that God of lust and pornography and imagination and fantasy and many of the people today because of all the movies from Hollywood is infiltrating even the Christian homes and even pastors are deeply affected. They are preaching in the pulpit but their hearts they are living in adultery because of the mind. That's another con kind of God today. See the result of this young man's obsession for money as God. Forced to choose money or Christ, the source of eternal life. The rich young man chose money. That major decision cut himself, detached forever from the giver of life. <coughs> that major decision. You are in the crossroads of your life, even today. <coughs> I'm going to ask you to make a decision. Whether you're a believer, or a newly convert to the Lord, or you're a pastor, or you are very new, or maybe you're the first, your first time you heard this message. You must know that you and I, as a sinner, we need mercy and the grace from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Tonight, Jesus is reaching out to you. Tonight, He is reaching out to you. Today is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. If you will hear my voice, don't harden your hearts, the Bible says. The Bible says, I have loved you deeply. While hanging on the cross, that's the physical manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ's love. For God, the greatest lover, so love, the greatest degree, the world, the greatest number, that He gave, the greatest act, His only begotten Son, the greatest gift, that whosoever, the greatest, the greatest invitation, 
believe it in Him, the greatest simplicity shall not perish, the greatest deliverance, but the greatest deference, have the greatest certainty, everlasting life, the greatest possession. Amen. The same Jesus Christ today, the Bible says, when He was hanging on the cross, that's the love personified in the person of Jesus Christ. Hanging on the cross, He was saying, I am thirsty, I'm thirsty. And there was a soldier who heard that voice. And what he did, he, he took a sponge, put it on a hyssop plant, and dip it in a sour vinegar, and put it right to the lips, to the mouth of Jesus Christ. When he received the drink, he said, it is finished. And then Jesus said, into thy hands, I command my spirit. One of the soldiers, when they saw Jesus Christ, high on the cross, you can barely recognize him as a man. The face was saturated with blood. There's no beauty you can deserve him. And that's not enough. He took the pierce and he struck the side of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. bringing blood and water. That blood of Jesus yes. Christ showing the love to you and to me tonight. Every drop of the precious blood of Jesus yes. is saying to you, yes. I love you. Yes. Another drop, Lord. the word of love resound. Amen. I love you. Yes. I love you yes. with an everlasting love. Yes. He died on the cross Amen. with a broken heart. Yes. I pray tonight Lord. that you will not break God's heart tonight. Amen. Regardless of any God that you are clinging to, it might be a vice, it might be your habit, it might be your ambition for money, it might be anything that dethrone Jesus Christ in your heart. You must settle the issue tonight and make a major decision tonight. Yes. Let Him be the God of your life yes. or He will not be the God at all. Make Amen. a decision. When He was hanging on the cross of Calvary, He was naked on the cross. Yes. He took your sins Amen. and my sins your shame in my shame, yeah. died a horrible death on the cross like a murderer. So you and I, tonight, can enjoy yes. the life Lord. everlasting. Yes. That life is being offered to you. Amen. Would you take it yes. or reject it in uh, doom forever and ever and the vengeance of the Almighty God? For many of you tonight, I'm extending this invitation from your seat. On my left, on my right, at the center aisles of this auditorium, I'll give you this opportunity. And you might be probably a believer, but you know your heart is not so loud to the Lord. Maybe you're a servant of the Lord that are many, many things that are creeping into your mind. And you are praying to the Lord, you're a member of the choir, and you know there's a hidden sin like a cobra inside you, of your heart tonight. Yes. You probably are here as a Protestant or a Catholic or a Muslim or a Jewish. And maybe you don't have a religion tonight. You want to get right with God. God is not based on my religion. God is dealing with the heart. Man look after the outward appearance, but God is looking to the heart. If you're struggling, maybe if your wife doesn't know what is happening to you, and you keep it for many, 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 many years, it's high time to say, Lord, I cannot be a phony. Lord, I heard that you died and you give everything. Would you allow me to give my sacrifice to you in my life? And can, can you give me a brand new being? You know what? When you make the first step, Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, give you rest. When you make that first step, I tell you tonight, the God of the heavens is not a man that he should lie. Anyone who will come to him, he will never push them out. But he will welcome you and give you a hope, a life in a new beginning. Amen. So I encourage you tonight. Yes. You want your sins to be forgiven. And I, I, I tell you that even Christians, with your respect, they're still living. I'm not talking about that I'm righteous, but to live deliberately 
in a daily basis, day in and day out, in that habitual sin, you become a servant of sin, and you're serving not God, but God can forgive you. And you'll have to do so, Lord, I have some struggle. It might be a vice, it might be some kind of hate, it might be some kind of pride, it might be some kind of your money is your security. If there's no money, you don't have life anymore. Unless you detach from the security that you know, it seems that that is your security. Once you detach your life from that kind of a God, you will understand the true God beginning tonight. And He will reveal Himself to you. And He will guide you when you're going out and coming in. And so tonight, regardless of your need, I'm extending the invitation to you. The worship team will be giving a song. In a few moments, we'll always stand up. Don't be embarrassed. I'm a pastor. Oh, I'm an evangelist. I am a Christian for 40 years. God is not counting whoever you are. He's looking for a humble heart saying, Jesus, I need you because without you, I cannot live. And so tonight, whatever your struggle, whatever your problem, you'll make a public stand to the Lord and say, God, I need you. Shall we all rise up together as the worship team will give us a song? In the Lord. As the song is being sung in a few moments, I don't want to end this meeting with just a matter of proclaiming to you the word of God. Mm -hmm. It is my heart desire tonight, as a pastor, heart, that leaving this place, you'll find the Lord Jesus Christ, that He will become in control of your life. Maybe you have a problem with your wife, and an ongoing struggle for many, many, many years. Memory of the yesterday, she's been a Christian for 30, 40 years, but it's still lingering in your mind. Make one step to say, God, I give up everything. I would like to allow you to take control of my life. If you are here tonight and you don't know Jesus, you'll be given opportunity. So to those people that have mentioned the things that you need, Acknowledge the Lord. As the song is being rendered from my right to the center to my left, I want you, in the name of the Lord, to come forward. I pray for you, pray with you, and you will receive the blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll wait for you here. Make, make a move to come forward. Don't be. It's so amazing. You need some prayer. Come forward. Don't be embarrassed. You're struggling. Come on. I cannot.